everybody can take their seat. We're about to have some fun. It's that quiet time. I have many comments here that won't take me long, but I will tell you this is just, I have looked forward to this for Irwin. I have looked forward to this for eight years because you and I both know that was not fun. What's everybody think? You <laughs> <laughs> say in my business the best ideas are borrowed. I'm not sure where this one came. Under arrest. I'm under arrest. I'm a darn pagan. Sorry. Okay. We have a big program, so that's as funny as it's going to get today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our moderator for this year's Tallahassee City Commission C3 debate, um, I'm going to introduce her. Uh, but before I do, I want to say one thing. This is not easy doing what they're about to do. Having run for office, and I know many of you have, um, and um, getting before not only this audience, but the entire community, putting yourself out there, is hard to do. And I um, have the greatest respect for anybody that runs, um, and I just want to thank them for putting themselves out there. And no matter what happens during primary or general election, you're an awesome person and keep trying because serving in public office is one of the greatest experiences you'll ever have. So keep going. <laughs> this is news. And so we want to have a news person as our moderator. So um, the, um, she's with WTXL. She's an anchor. And um, I'd like now to introduce Christine Souter to come up and moderate C3 Towns City Commission. I guess this is a debate. Come on up, Steve. All right, thank you. What time is it? Because usually I'm sleeping right now. I work third shift, so. All right. How many of you watch the news? Nobody? Okay. Well, I'm Christine Souders, and I'm on at 5 a.m., so if you're up at that time, good. You might know who I am. My co-anchor, I'm usually referred to as the blonde lady that sits next to Malcolm Hornsby. I have a name, my name's Christine Souders. Okay, so just everybody remember that. WTXL is very happy to be here and be part of this as a public service, so thank you for having us. And right now, you're on the news, so wave. Everybody wave right now. Okay, there you go. I'm gonna go ahead and name off everyone who's running for seat three right now, starting off with Bill Shack, because it is time. Bill Shack, it is time. <laughs> and then we have Lisa Brown. Then we have Richard Garzola. Jeremy Matlow. And Alexander Jordan. This is the order we will be going in. Bill Shack, start it off. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Bill Shack, and I'm running to be your next city commissioner. I came to Florida State in 1985. I got a marketing degree. I used that marketing degree in the restaurant industry. I've been in the restaurant industry for 28 years. 28 years of looking at sales and working in restaurants that did $8,000 to $80,000 a week. 28 years of working on budgets to find profits in companies with $8,000 a day all the way up to $4 million a year. Those are the things that I'm going to bring to the City Commission because our, our $900 million budget is something that somebody who has experience working with budgets needs to, to work on. I also have been involved in a lot of charity work over my years. Uh, not only am I a board member, but I'm also a coach with Special Olympics for about 17 years now, where I have an autistic son that was my inspiration for being involved in that. I also ran a charity for the intellectually disabled. And uh, during both of those things, what I'm able to do is become the food service director at the Carney Center, molding both of those experiences into a great program using our community and also serving 23,000 people. My name is Lisa Brown, and I am the president and CEO of Tallahassee Leon Federal Credit Union. I am a third generation Tallahasseean, and I am a mother of two amazing college age kids. I work in the most regulated industry in the U.S. I have earned the reputation as a change agent, turning around financial institutions that are struggling. I have volunteered on countless projects here in our community, including my summer camp that I put on for kids for half of the last eight years to teach them financial literacy. I've had the opportunity to share my expertise in developing countries around the world. My top three issues will be ethics, 
crime and public safety, and economic vitality. My financial background will serve Tallahassee well. Not only do I have experience with multi-million dollar budgets in the bond rating, I also help individuals with their personal finances every day. I understand these struggles to make ends meet. We're growing, but some are still Thank being left behind. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Richard Garzola. I'm a community organizer, field organizer for the past five years. I just recently graduated from Florida State University. I was a student athlete at Florida State for the past three years playing football. Uh, I'm known as an activist around the community. I just came from doing community service on, uh, in Frenchtown uh, where I, I mentor young men and women uh, who are in high school. I also help our Ernie Sims do that in the community as well. I'm a passionate individual, and I genuinely care for the people's community. That's why I call Tallahassee home. Even though I wasn't born here, I lay my head here every night. And what I say comes from the heart because when they struggle, I struggle. When you struggle, I struggle. So when they tell me why am I running, it's for everyone that's here. So those tough times, I hand out food to those people in Pensacola Street, even though when they don't have enough at a community center. I want to work on economic segregation. I want to work on collaborating business sectors, public, private, and nonprofits. Through my leadership, some of the more that I do every summer. That's what I'm here for. Thank you, Richard. Jeremy Matlow. Hey, good afternoon. I'm Jeremy Matlow. Uh, Gil, don't worry, I'm not going to duplicate that shirt. <laughs> I've been a politician since about December. Um, it was never my plan to run for office. I'm just a guy who's lived in Tallahassee his whole life. And thinks it can be a better city than what it is today. Uh, growing up, I was raised by a single mother of four kids in neighborhoods that many of us never even <coughs> see. It was hard. I stayed here. I started my business here. Uh, we grew Bank Street Pies from a few thousand dollars investment into an 85 employee company. I met the love of my life here. Uh, Sarah, do you mind saying that now? <coughs> we started our family here. We love Tallahassee, this is our home. But the events of the past few years has made it very clear. Something has got to change. I'm Jeremy Matlow, and I'm running to be a leader in that change. Thank you, Jeremy Matlow. And last but not least, Alexander Jordan. Good morning, uh, Alex Jordan. My roots date back to the early 70s, 80s here in Tallahassee. Back in 1992, I made Tallahassee my home with my lovely wife, my two daughters, one soon to be off of my payroll. She'll be graduating from Florida a and next year. Yes, I am that old. And uh, at the same time, there have been a lot of things that happened in the city of Tallahassee that has impacted me personally. Uh, from our crime rate, from our influx of our uh, economic opportunities for our business to here in Tallahassee, from my experiences working back with Long Child Days as our governor up until now with Governor Rick Scott. I've had a lot of experience dating back to what we would consider sales tax, corporate tax. Uh, business professional regulations as the deputy director of administration. So I understand the dynamics and the concerns of our current and local business owners here in Tallahassee. At the same time, I understand that education is key and important to our community. But at the same time, we need to address what is important. That's first, understanding how we can have a strong and more, more economic... Thank you, Alex Jordan. As a commissioner, what would you specifically recommend the city do to combat the serious crime issues in Tallahassee? Bill Shack. Well, the first thing is that we need to support our police. Um, our community needs to get behind our police officers. And the other thing is we need to actually support our police with funds. Uh, we continue to have a, a decrease of the amount of police officers by retirement, and we don't replace enough of them. So first thing we need to do is give the police all the tools they need to do their job. That means their staffing. We need to give them the body cameras that were approved I think I heard someone say they were talking about this in 2014. They still don't have, during those four years, we're number one in crime. But at what point are the commissioners going to make a decision to get these body cameras now? The next thing is a facility. And we need to use a facility without spending $5.5 million on a piece of land where we have our own land. Those are things we need to do first. Please sit down. Okay, first of all, I was at the city commission meeting last night and the body cameras were approved. Um, so, first of all. Um, second of all, um, it's critical that Tallahassee have a commissioner that is serious about addressing the issues of public safety. And I've received the endorsements of both the local PBA and the firefighters, so I am that candidate. Um, the same streets that were dangerous when I was 10 years old are the same streets that are dangerous today, and we can do better. 
We need true community, true community policing. Um, we need to explore the policies that burden an already stretched police force, like bars staying open until 4 a.m. I have college-age students. I know nothing good happens after midnight. <laughs> Richard Garzola. Uh, I believe that it is on the community as well, but we have programs in place that are already, can be affected, but they're just reinforced and accelerated in regards to like the neighborhood uh, safe program. But a lot of times the community members and us don't reinforce it, don't go out and do the things we're supposed to do. Don't go out on those walks on those Thursdays with our police officers. We don't see what they are doing in our community every day, whether that's with the sheriff's office, whether that's TPD, whether that's uh, the students with FSUPD, Family PD. So it really falls back on us. At the same time, no matter how many ratings and ranks we are number one in body crime, we're also trending in the right direction and getting better. So there are programs in place we just have to reinforce them. Jeremy Matlow. Yeah, thanks. I think you know, crime has been an issue that's been on the top of all of our minds. Because we all just want to feel safe in our neighborhoods. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we were canvassing with our team on Hillsboro, and an hour after we left, there was a shooting. Uh, we need to make sure our law enforcement has the resources they need uh, to address the current problem, uh, but we also need to be looking into the future. I commend Chief Leo and Sheriff Walking Hill on their community policing. I think the cameras we put into Bond and other high-density crime areas uh, makes total sense. I think the Tempo program is a great program to reach out to young people and try to get them before they commit crime. Um, when we start talking about how poverty and crime is related, um, then we can really start addressing this issue. Alex Jordan. Uh, thank you. Um, one of the biggest concerns in the community is economic disparity. Uh, a lot of the folks are right now currently are trying to just survive, take care of their family, have any means to be able to ensure that they have the lights on, feed their family, and take care of their necessities. Right now, we need much, much more economic development. That's why the crime rate is high. There's misleading information on the uniform crime reports. Uniform crime reports highlight a lot of sexual assaults, a lot of miscellaneous um, crimes. But at the same time, they're not addressing the key component of our community, jobs, opportunity. These students, these individuals who are coming to our community need opportunity to be successful just like any other. So at the same time, our community has done well by Chief Walt Wendell and Chief DeVio in ensuring that those items that they have as Thank resources are available. Next question. Do you support the creation of a Children's Services Council in Tallahassee, Leon County? If so, why? If not, why not? Jeremy Matlow. Right, right now, I absolutely support the Children's Services Council. Going into 2020, uh, we have the time frame we need uh, to figure out exactly what that council is going to look like, um, what we're going to address with it um, from uh, mental health, the early childhood education. These are needs in our community. And I think when we start to really look at it, we'll see when we start investing on the front end, we're going to get paid in the back end. So not only is it a fiscal, a fiscal responsible thing to do, it's the right thing to do. I'll support that. Alex Jordan. Yes, I, I do support it. Um, by working with the numerous disability programs, homeless, foster care, uh, veteran services program around the city, when I look at a lot of the programs that we currently have, that would be one that in the community that we definitely need to look forward to investing in, allowing more resources to be allocated to it, to ensure that the resources for us to be able to move forward with those programs are at the point that, that it needs to be able to propel and move it in. Bill Shack. Uh, absolutely not. I do not support that. Um, I ran a charity as an executive director and I worked with the CHSP to have grant funding for my program, as many people in this room probably do. Um, what I noticed was there's only $2 million in that fund. Why can't the city put another $6 million out of their $900 million budget into that? That's $8 million right there. We have a $29 million uh, profit from the city utility. Why, why, if it's such a dire program, why can't we take $8 million out of that and throw it into the uh, children's services? The bottom line is that property tax owners, property owners shouldn't have to pick up the burden of the failure of the city to take care of children's issues. That's the bottom line. Please sit around. But there is no doubt in my mind that we have a need. There's no doubt. Um, but I think that it was a wise decision to put off the decision um, until 2020 until we can get a better grip on what the needs assessments are, um, what the structure will look like of a committee. I think that the structure is a really key. It's always about governance, um, whether you're in a corporation or a 
credit union or in the government. It's about governance and the way that you structure that governance can be make or break for how successful a program is. So I would suggest that we, uh, it's a good thing that we put this off to make sure that we've got the governance down, down pat. Richard Garzola. I'm all for it. Uh, for someone who works with kids every single day, whether it's uh, in, the after, in the morning with first generation college students, whether it's in the afternoon with mentor, mentoring uh, young children, I call them a Nora Jack uh, team. I know that is what we all fight for. That's what all of you are worried about. Anyone with children, that's what you worry about. That's what you care for most. That's that life you care for most and you want them to live the best life possible. Uh, go to school, have the, the best and an abundance of resources in the city of Tallahassee, and that's a place you call home and you want them to call it home. And we all talk about retention and things of that nature. So students, when they want to stay here and think about their future kids, they want to have those resources and have that ability to live their best life. Thank you. Do you Thank support you. using bed tax funds that have been collected and will be collected toward a performing <laughs> arts center? We'll start with Richard Garzola. Thank you. In regards to a performing arts center, there's, a, for example, the, where the CRA just put their money in, uh, where they split the money, of the $3 million in regards to the community center uh, and, and the South Side, anything that benefits our community and can further and accelerate that development uh, and make gives us that community feeling that at the end of the day, I like to say there's a difference between a house and a home. And in regards to a home and giving that home feeling, I'm here for funding the community and pouring in the right amount of money um, ethically into our communities, into the community centers that need it the most, into the programming and nonprofits that ask for it and can accordingly it. Thank you. Jeremy Madeline. Uh, yeah, well, I, I've always supported the arts. Uh, I own a local music venue. Uh, it's a part of our quality of life. We need, we, it's, it makes our city better. It'll drive tourism. It would be a great asset for here. Um, kind of let down that we never got the big performing arts center um, that we were shooting for, uh, but we are where we are today, and I think anything we do to further the arts uh, will be a good decision. Alex Jordan? Yes, I agree that we definitely need uh, that resource. Um, a place for many of our, our, our rent and our residents to go to identify that we can collaborate, have some community unity within the uh, art museum is, a, is the best thing we can do. Right now, I really, really uh, have took in, into art itself within our community, identifying what are some of the great uh, opportunities for us to be able to look at some of the uh, resources outside of Tallahassee where we could have much more tourism coming in, more people coming in, investing in our community, identifying how and what is needed for us to be able to have that uh, funding resource available as well. Bill Shack? The answer is no. The answer is no. Uh, we don't need to, we shouldn't have taken that money and put it into the CRA and had them distribute it. We should have given back. We should have refunded. We should have done something different than continuing to use our government to fund programs that we don't need. Uh, I don't believe we need a performing arts studio, and the, we didn't because we never passed it. So we should have taken that money and given it back to the people. Uh, that is not something we needed to do with that money, and I agree with what we did. We actually took a, a group that owed money to the city and was thinking about giving more money to them. I mean, those are the kinds of decisions we need to stop. Lisa Brown. So yes, I would support, um, but I think the more important question as a part of this is the process. Making sure that the process, the CRA process, is transparent, that everyone understands exactly what, how the application process works, um, that it's fair, um, and that we are funding the right, the right programs for it. So yes, I would absolutely support it. Everyone gets a minute for closing statements. We are going to start with Alex Jordan. Yeah, I want to thank Tiger Bay for allowing me to be here with you guys this morning. Uh, candidate uh, Bill, Jeremy, Richard, and Lisa. Um, we have a lot of great topics here. We have a lot of great, great topics. Um, when we look at the museum, when we look at the uh, CRA findings, we're looking at the utilities, we're looking at our airport. At the end of the day, it's all about what's best for the people, the voters the constituents who are currently in our community who has concern about where their funds and where their money is going. Money right now is very, very tight for many of us. But at the same time, we need to have a community that's very loving, very compassionate for what we need to have to allow our community to move forward. 
At the end of the day, it's all about the people. It's not about us who's sitting at the docile. It's not for us who's running around identifying what are the, the concerns and issues that the city commission is not doing. If you vote for Alex Jordan, I will make sure that the right decisions are made. I will ensure that our funds are allocated to the appropriate program. I will ensure that we're able to move Tallahassee forward. Thank you. Bill Shack. Uh, thank you again, Tiger Bay, for having us, and thank you for all everybody coming. I think it's really important you guys get engaged in the process. Um, bottom line is what Commissioner Zipper says is we are at a crossroads, and the crossroads is we've been electing the same officers over and over again, and it's time for some new leadership on the city commission. New vision, new priorities, and that's the way we need to go. And voting for someone like me who's not involved in politics, not the insider's favorite choice, not the endorsed uh, candidate, not the one raising the most money, but I'm the one doing the most homework. I've been out at all the commission meetings. I've been out uh, doing my homework to learn the issues, talk to residents about what's important. And what's important is not what's going on now. What's important is our commission is making common sense decisions that are gonna impact people's lives. I see it every day at the homeless shelter. I see the need to help people. And it's not helping your buddies and your friends and your old acquaintances, it's helping actual people. And that's what city commissioners are supposed to do. That's what I've done for the past uh, up to years as a volunteer and as a community uh, servant, and that's what I'll continue Thank to do with you. the city commission. Lisa Brown. So I am a consensus builder. Look, I negotiated a divorce um, after 23 years of marriage with a paper napkin and a pencil. And God bless him, that's what we say, y'all, um, is that he is supporting me, which is wonderful. The only thing I didn't negotiate in the divorce agreement was that campaign contribution I'm working on again. Um, <laughs> if I can do that, then I can bring City Hall together um, to give Tallahassee the kind of governance that it deserves. We need stable and competent commissioners that are coming together with sincere motives. And I respectfully ask for your vote for Lisa Brown for City Commission C3. Richard Garzola. Thank you uh, for inviting me and thank you for all for making this event what it is uh, today. I'm running for city commission because I believe we need a city commission who represents everyone in Tallahassee. Who has a piece of every neighborhood, represents all parts of the student, uh, this local resident, everyone in the city of Tallahassee. Someone who is an unapolog unapologetic servant leader, goes on the community every day with or without the title of the city commissioner who hears out what the residents have to say, knocking on a door and hearing about something that happened down the block, going down and knocking on someone's door, a phone call, being accessible, being transparent. I can help you. This is what we're doing for you today. This is what we're gonna work on at the next commission meeting. That's what we need. Someone who's there for our kids. Someone who's there for our seniors. I want more pickleball courts. I want more uh, community pro uh, programming for our kids, mental health, where there's, we need to take and be more innovative in our community. And that's what it's gonna take, a collective group without supervision. Jeremy Matlow. What it comes down to is this. Are we ready to take control of our future or do we want more of the same? Um, over this course of this campaign, I've knocked on thousands of doors, talked to thousands of people, and they're all sending the same message. They want new leadership and they're fed up with crime and poverty in their community. Through my life experience, uh, growing up, struggling, uh, building a business from the ground up, I have the perspective we need to get things done, and I know what we need to do to do it. I balance a multi-million dollar budget, and it doesn't matter how big a budget gets, um, the focus always comes down to the value of a single dollar, and that's what I'm gonna focus on. I'll also be an open and accessible city commissioner to everybody, and it won't even cost you a handful of bundled campaign checks. <laughs> We're the only campaign that's equipped to do what needs to get done. I'm Jeremy Matlow, I'm asking for your vote on August 28th. Thank you. Let's give one more round of applause to our moderator, Christine Sauter, from WTHL. And our candidates, um, y'all did a great job. Thank you for coming today.